Okay, we're going to move on. We've talked about the five number summary. Now, one of the uses for the five number summary is to draw a box plot and also help identify outliers. And we're also going to talk a little bit about quantitative and categorical relationships. So the five number summary for the population of the 50 U.S. states and millions of people is already given to us. Remember the first number is the minimum, second is Q1, then we have the median, Q3, and the maximum. The table shows us all 50 populations in case you want to know what they are, but we will need to look at the table to find the outliers. So we want to determine whether there are any outliers and if so, which ones. Well, to determine if there are outliers, the first thing we need is the interquartile range. Remember that's Q3 minus Q1. So it would be 6.676 minus 1.660. So 6.676 minus 1.660 is 5.016. Now, to determine outliers, we take Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So that would be 1.660 minus 1.5 times 5.016 which gives us a negative 5.0 864. That would be the lower limit to identify outliers. Then we take Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR, which is 6.676 plus 1.5 times 5.016 which gives us 14.20. Now, any numbers that are between negative 5.864 and positive 14.20 would be considered outliers. Now, there's nothing below negative 5.864. Especially since it's a negative number and it really doesn't make sense to have negative populations. However, if we look for greater than 14.2, we have 17.385, 19.281, and 35. 842. So 17.385, 19.281, 22.472, 35.842 are greater than 14.20, so they are all outliers. And these are the states of Florida, New York, Texas, and California. 
So the four most populous states would be considered outliers when combined with the rest of them. Okay, let's look at this box plot. This is a graph of the percent of the population to graduate high school in each of the 50 states. So are there any outliers? Well, if we look at this, remember outliers are identified by asterisks. There are no asterisks on this box plot, so there are no outliers. We want to estimate the range of data values. Well, this is the maximum, is about 92. The minimum is about 78, so it would be 92 minus 78, or 15. Now estimate the mean. Well, if we look at this, the median is this middle number, and that's about 87. And the data are left skewed. So the mean will be less than the median. But it won't be far less than it, so maybe about 86. The actual is 86.464. Now, we want to figure out what the best estimate would be for the standard deviation. Well, the standard deviation is approximately the range divided by 4. So that would be 15 divided by 4, which is 3.75. So if we look at the numbers 1, 4, 8, and 12, 4 is the closest to 3.75. So that is approximately the standard deviation. Now, we're going to be comparing box plots. So in a recent study, participants were randomized to drink either tea or coffee every day for two weeks. After two weeks, blood samples were exposed to an antigen and an immune system response was measured, with higher values representing a strong immune system. So here are the two box plots. So does there appear to be a relationship between the categorical variable T or coffee and the quantitative variable immune response? And we look at this, and yes, there appears to be a substantial difference. between the two groups in terms of immune response.
Then we ask which group appears to have the stronger immune response. Well, we look at this box plot for the tea drinkers, and it's up much higher. The immune response is much higher than it is for coffee. I mean, the fifth, middle 50% is much higher than it is for coffee. There are some for coffee that are up high, but not as many. So the tea drinkers. appear to have a stronger immune response. Now we have the question, are there outliers in either group? Well, if we look at the graph, there are no outliers identified. So there are no outliers identified in these box plots. Now, just a reminder for the box plot. We have the minimum that's not an outlier. We have Q1. We have the median. We have Q3. And we have the maximum. That's not an outlier. Any outliers would be identified with asterisk. OK, so now we're given a set of descriptive statistics for this study. So we want to give notation for and find the differences in mean. So x bar sub 1 would be the mean immune response for tea drinkers and that is 34.82 x bar sub 2 or let's do it as x bar sub t for t and x bar sub c for coffee. This is the mean immune response for coffee drinkers. That's 17.70. So the difference in the means, we have x bar sub t minus x bar sub c, which is 34.82 minus 17.70, which is 17.12. We did not specify which direction we wanted the difference to be. So it's very possible you could do x bar sub c minus x bar sub t, which would be 1770 minus 34.82, which would give us a negative 17.12. Both of these would be correct. And it's OK for the difference to be a negative number. It's just saying that the number you subtracted was larger. So now, can we conclude the T causes an increase in this aspect of the immune system? We can 
if a significant effect is found then we can assume causation since the data come from a randomized experiment. If this were an observational study, we could not make the conclusion. Well, we could not conclude causation. But since it's a randomized experiment, we can. <laughs>